This chapter will cover regression. Regression is a common statistical technique employed by many to make generalizations as well as predictions about data. Just as a side note, the purpose of this chapter is to give learners a high level overview of how to apply regression techniques in R rather than to give a full introduction to the concept of regression itself. However, there are multiple comprehensive resources in the resources section of the book, chapter 16, for anybody who's interested in going deeper. This chapter will cover three types of regression, linear regression, multiple regression, and logistic regression. The first kind of regression we'll cover is linear regression. Linear regression will use your data to come up with a linear model that describes the general trend of your data. Generally speaking, a linear model will consist of a dependent variable, sometimes denoted as y, at least one independent variable denoted as x, coefficients to go along with each independent variable, and an intercept. Here's one common linear model you may remember, y equals mx plus b. This is a simple linear model many people begin with where x and y are the independent and dependent variables respectively. m is the slope or coefficient of x and b is the intercept. Now to perform a linear regression in R, you'll use the lm function. Let's try it out on the faithful data set. So let's get rid of this. So this is what the faithful data set looks like, the first couple rows at least. And just generally speaking, when you're using the LM function, you're going to have at least two parameters, uh, which represent Y and X. And they are denoted like this and separated by the tilde. So let's try this out. Let's comment this out and just have it as an example so we know what we're looking at. So we'll create a new variable called LM, set it equal to LM function and then have y be the eruptions column. So this column, this first column here, and then have x be the waiting column. So we'll run that and then print out the summary. So the summary will show us the statistical significance of our model along with all relevant statistics to correctly interpret the significance. Additionally, we now have our model coefficients from this summary, we can assume that our model looks something like this. So eruptions equals waiting times 0 0.075628 minus 1.874016. So we get the coefficient here, and then here is B. All right, let's break down everything that this model summary returns. So the call section calls the model that you created. So this is just what we told it to do. The residual section gives you a summary of all your model residuals. So more simply put, a residual denotes how far away any given point falls from the predicted value. The coefficient section gives us our model coefficients. So that's this section right here. For each coefficient, we're given the respective standard error right here. The standard error is used to measure the precision of coefficients coefficients estimate. Next we have a t value for each coefficient. The t value is calculated by dividing the coefficient by the standard error and then finally we have the p value accompanied by symbols to denote the corresponding significance levels. So these are the p values here in scientific notation and then these are the symbols denoting significance levels. And then you can interpret these symbols by this legend down here. So uh, from left to right, left is better. And then as you go further right, then your model is less significant. Okay. And then down here, we have three more items. So the residual standard error gives you a way to measure the standard deviation of the residuals. And it's calculated by dividing 
residual sum of squares by the residual degrees of freedom and taking the square root of that where the residual degrees of freedom is equal to total observations minus total model parameters minus one, which is a lot. Um, feel free to come back and reference this, but don't feel like you need to memorize it right now. The next item is multiple R squared. Um, R squared gives you the proportion of variance that can be explained by your model. Your adjusted R squared statistic will tell you the exact same thing, but will adjust for the number of variables you've included in your model to make sure that you're not just adding more variables to increase the significance. Um, and then finally, your F statistic down here, oops, right here. This will help you to understand the probability that all of your model parameters are actually equal to zero. Next, let's cover multiple regression. So if you had more X variables you wanted to add into your linear model, you could add them just like you would in any other math equation. So this is an example of that. So before we just ended our function here and got rid of all this stuff, but now we want to add in some more X variables. So we say the Y column of data is equal to the X column or is a function of the X, X1 column plus X2 column plus X3 column and so on. Um, additionally, you can use the data parameter rather than putting the name of the data set before every variable. So instead of saying data dollar sign x1, data dollar sign x2, and so on, we could do this. So just y is a function of x1, x2, x3, x4, and then say the data that we're passing in is called data. Um, let's try an, a real example. So we'll comment all this out. And we'll use the empty cars data set. And let's just run this to get a refresher on what that data set looks like. Now let's try to predict miles per gallon and use every other column as a variable and see what the results look like. So we're going to take this column and we want to predict what that column would be based on what all these other variables are or the values of those variables. We could do something like this. We create a new variable called LM, set that equal to the LM function, and say MPG is a function of SIL plus this plus HP, and so on. And then you'll notice we pass in MT cars as the data parameter. And let's go ahead and run that and print out the results. Um, from here, you would likely tweak your model further based on the significance statistics we see here. So just at a glance, it's not looking like our model is very significant. However, that's outside the scope of what we're doing here. Um, take a look at the resources sections in the book if, you're, if you want to go deeper. But this is just a high level of how you would do multiple regression. All right, and last, we'll cover logistic regression. Logistic regression is commonly used when your dependent variable y is by is binomial, so a 0 or a 1. Um, instead of using the LM function, though, you, you'll use the GLM function. Let's go ahead and try this out on the empty cars data set again, except instead we'll use AM as the dependent variable. Let's get rid of this stuff first. Okay, and then Let's go ahead and print out head of empty cars just so we know what we're doing here. So we want to predict the AM column this time, and you'll notice all the values are 0 or 1. And we're going to say GLM variable is equal to the GLM function, where AM is a function of SIL, HP, weight. And then we're going to say family is equal to binomial. And then we're going to pass empty cars in as the data parameter. And let's go ahead and print that out. And that's how, well, just a high level of how you would do logistic regression in R. Like I said, with the other two examples, if you want to go deeper on this concept, visit the resources section. There's plenty of resources out there that go into regression comprehensively and uh, how to interpret the results of these models.